this week on Faithless. I want to prophesy on your life today. Everything taken away from you by the power of the blood of Jesus, everything will be restored back to you. The house is coming into your life. The land is coming into your life. Come on, lift up your hands and say, I receive that. that. Amen. Amen. Do you understand that God has a portion of people that is commissioned for this church? Listen to me very carefully. God wants all these chairs filled. Say hallelujah. But why are they not there yet? Because they are being withstood, hindered, and resisted by witchcraft. That's why you have to break the spirit of witchcraft. Can I hear amen, somebody? So notice that they were being hindered on a ministerial level. Well, let me show you a few more. All right, now, go with me to 1 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles, now, can you see how it's all over the Bible? It's all over the Bible. 1 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1. Let's read that together, please. 1 Chronicles 21, verse 1. Let's all read together, please. And Satan did what? Stood up or withstood Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Look at this. This is David at the peak of his administration. And Satan opposed Israel, withstood Israel by provoking David to number Israel. And we will deal with that in a few minutes. So notice that even David was being withstood, opposed, and resisted, thwarted by Satan. Can you see that in your Bible? All right, now let me show you one more. Go with me, please, to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3, please. Look at verse 8 and verse 9. Look at verse 8 and verse 9. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 8 and verse 9. Put it on the screen, please. And let me show you this. What you're about to read here is something that you never read in the Old Testament. Their names were not mentioned. Now, you know that Moses had a call from God. He saw the bush burning, but it wasn't being consumed. And he heard God's voice, Moses, Moses, right? And he turned to look aside. And God said to him, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. All right? Now, he heard from God, did he not? So now he goes down into Egypt and he says to Pharaoh, Pharaoh, God says, let my people go. Did Pharaoh let the people go? No. What did Pharaoh say? Who is the Lord that I should obey him? Right? Now, now, look what it says here. Now, let's all read together please. Now, as who? Janus and Jambres did what? Withstood Moses. By the word withstood, write the word resist, oppose, hindered. Right? Now, notice now. See, Paul rips the veil and shows you what was going on in the ministry of Moses. Moses had a word from God. He says, Pharaoh, let the people go, but he wouldn't go. So what happened? Moses threw his rod down, and that rod became a snake. Then what happened? The sorcerers of Egypt did what? Now you know their names. What's their names? Janus and Jambres. Are you hearing me, somebody? Amen? They threw their rod down and became a snake. But what happened? What happened to the snakes? What happened to the snakes? It was swallowed up by what? The rod of God. Amen? Let me tell you this. The rod of God in your mouth. The rod of God in your hands. Whatever snakes has been thrown against you, whatever snakes are coming against you, the rod of God in your mouth will swallow them up. Yeah. Shout amen. amen. Now, what's their names? Janus, Janus and Jambres. Write this down, please. The word Janus means vexation he who vexes are you listening and the word jambres means opposition to the point of poverty and ruin so when you put the two names together it means he will vex you he will oppose you to the point of what ruin and poverty are you listening are you listening to me saints all right now notice something here they came and they withstood Moses. Now, are you ready to shout? 
Are you ready to shout? Yes. Now, look at this. Paul was being opposed on a personal level, right? Daniel on a national level, Nehemiah on an administrational level, Ezra on a financial level, Joshua on a personal level, Paul and Barnabas on a ministerial level. Are you hearing me, saints? And Moses here in his ministry, right? In his ministerial level. Are you hearing me, somebody? But now, look at this. Look at the next, look at the next verse, please. Everything that's coming, whether it's Janus or Jambres, whether it is Sambalat or Tobiah, whoever come against you, let's read together. But, I can't hear you, but what? Say louder, but the what? Say it again louder. Lift up your hands and say it. Hallelujah. Whoever is coming against you, whatever is coming against you, whatever opposition, whatever conspiracy, whatever juju spell or jinx, they will not proceed any further. Come on, lift up your hands and they will not proceed any further. And their folly shall be manifested to all men. Let me tell you this. Whoever is coming bef- against you, their stupidity will be revealed before all men. Yeah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, lift up your hands. They will not proceed any further. Hallelujah. No generational curse will proceed any further in your life. No family curse will proceed any further in your life. No disease from your mother's side will proceed in your life. Amen. No, gen- no, no paternal disease, no paternal curse will proceed any further in your life. Lift up your hands and say, I receive it. I'm trying to tell you, whatever killed your forefathers will not kill you. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever put them in the ground will not put you in the ground. Say glory to God. Come on, say glory to God. God. Touch your neighbor, say they will not proceed any further. Anything coming against this church, any conspiracy against this ministry, any conspiracy against your business or against your children, it will not proceed any further. Let me show you what I mean here. Go with me, please, to the book of Lamentation, chapter 3. Lamentation, chapter 3, verse 35 and verse 36. Lamentation, chapter, 30, chapter 3, verse 35 and verse 36. Please, uh, I want everybody to read these verses. Uh, let's read together, please. Where do you want to go? To what? The right of a man before the face of the Most High. Stop right there. Lift up your hands. Say, I have rights. What? Come on, talk to me. You have what? You have rights. You have a right to be blessed. You have a right to be the head and not the tail. You have a right to be on top and not beneath. You have a right to be blessed in the city and to be blessed in the field. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at the next verse, please. Let's all read the next verse. To what? To subvert. Now, by the word subvert, write the word sabotage. To sabotage, to subvert, or to boycott a man in his cause. What happened? I can't hear you. What? What? <laughs> Lift up your hand and say, the Lord approveth not. Now, you got to talk to me like you're Pentecostals, all right? Lift up your hand and say, the Lord does not approve. <laughs> say one more time a bit louder, please. Will a, will a bit more, more power in your mouth? Say it again. The Lord does not approve. Say it again. The Lord does not approve. Now lift up your hands and sit with me. If the Lord does not approve, I don't approve. Say it again. If the Lord does not approve, then what? Hallelujah. Jesus said it this way. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. 
the Lord does not approve of disease, then you don't approve of disease. The Lord does not approve of you being broke, then you don't approve of being broke. Now think about whatever negativity is going on in your life right now and say with me, I don't approve it. I can't hear you. Come on, say, I don't approve it. Say to your neighbor, I don't approve it. Say, neighbor, whatever is hindering me, whatever is stopping me, whatever is blocking me, opposing me, withstanding me, I don't approve it. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Now, it says they will not proceed any further. Is that correct? All right, now let me show you this. Go with me. I'm going to give you some keys to break spiritual opposition to your destiny in a minute. But go to Acts chapter 12, verse 1 till verse 3. Verse 1 till verse 3. Now about that time, look, look in your Bible. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to do what? S certain of the vex, certain of the church. Next verse. And he killed who? James, the brother of John, with the sword. Next verse. And because he saw it, what happened? Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of the year again, and Christmas is just around the corner. It is the season of giving and receiving. This week, we have a very special Christmas offer for you to give to someone special. A special gift that will be a blessing to them again and again. This Christmas, our special offer is four powerful books. The Holy Spirit, the supernatural in you, the power of praying in tongues, 101 explosive benefits of fasting, and provoking exploits through the force of imposing aggressive faith. These four books normally would sell for $65, but for this festive season, you can have this life-changing package for an offering of $50 plus shipping and handling. Take advantage of this Christmas offer right now and bless someone special with this gift. Four powerful books for an offering of $50 plus shipping and handling. Call the number on your screen, 502-523-4407. 502-523-4407 or go online at glenorecchion.org. Next verse, and he killed who? James, the brother of John, with the sword. Next verse, and because he saw it, what happened? Stop. He what? He what? What did Paul say? They will not proceed further. Is that right? And here, what's happening? So which one is right? Paul says they will not proceed further, but here they are proceeding further. Why? Why? Because the church was sleeping in prayerlessness. How do we know that? Look at the next verse 5. Look at verse 5. Look at verse 5, please. Peter, therefore, was what? Now what happened? Stop. But what? But what? I can't hear you. But what? Look at your neighbor and say, but prayer. Okay. Oh, come on, say, but prayer. Okay. Was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Amen. The way you stop the enemy to proceed further in your life, number one, you have to be relentless in prayer. Write this down, please. Write this down. Number one, I'm going to give you some keys to break opposition to your to your destiny, you have to pray in the spirit. You have to pray in the spirit. But prayer was made without what? Ceasing. Now, circle the word without ceasing. Circle the word without ceasing. And in Greek, that means extended and protracted prayers. Extended and what? Protracted prayers. That is not praying uh, when you get up in the morning and you do a two-minute confession. Hello? That is not a two-minute confession in the morning. That is praying in the spirit. 
The old timers used to call it praying through. You means, it means you pray until something happens. It means you pray until you break the bondage. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, now, now, so write the word prayer. You got to pray in the spirit. Number two, write this down, please, very quickly. I'm going to uh, give you two or three, and then we're done. Number two, write this down, please. Number two, you have to invoke the covering authority of the blood of Jesus. You have to do what? Invoke the what? Covering authority of what? The blood of Jesus. That means you must have faith in his blood. Lift up your hand and say, I have faith. Come on, talk to me. Say, I have faith in the blood of Jesus. Now, now, so what does that mean? What does that mean? Listen to me very carefully here. Listen to this. Have you ever asked yourself this question? Now, follow me. Have you ever asked yourself this question? How come Satan could strike Job? How come Satan could strike Job? Now, look at me. Look at me. What was the very first thing that, that Satan took from Job? What was the very first thing that Satan took from Job? What? Can't hear you. You read your Bible, right? What was the very first thing that Satan took from Job? Business? Family? No. Before he took his family and before he took his health, now watch this, look at me. He took away his cattle. Is that right? Why was that important? Don't you remember that Job... Every time his son would have a party, he would offer a blood sacrifice. And he would say, it may be that my children have sinned against the Lord. So now, he would offer a blood sacrifice. Is that correct? So the first thing that Satan did was to take away his cattle. When you take away his cattle, there is no blood sacrifice. And if the hedge be broken, the, the serpent will bite you. Are you listening? So before he took his health, before he took all his children and everything that he owned, he took away the blood away from him. Are you hearing me, somebody? Amen. And that's why he became an open target for the enemy. Lift up your hand. Say, I have faith. Come on, say, I have faith in the blood of Jesus. Say, I invoke over my life the blood of Jesus. Did Job recover all? How did he recover double? God said to his friends, You have spoken evil against my servant Job. Now get him some cattle. The moment cattle came back into his life and he offered a blood sacrifice, everything that was taken away from him was restored to him. I want to prophesy on your life today. Everything taken away from you by the power of the blood of Jesus, everything will be restored back to you. For your trouble, God will give you double. Lift up your hands and say, I receive that. Let me give you an example. Uh, the king of, king of Moab was at war against the king of Israel and the king of Judah, all right? Jehoram and uh, Jehoshaphat. Now listen to this. And so there was, they ran out of water. There was no water. And so Eli, uh, Jehoshaphat said, is there another prophet that we can inquire from God? Are you listening? Right? And they said, yes, there's Elisha. And when Elisha came and he saw the king of Israel, he said, what have I to do with you? If it was not for the king of Judah, I would not even speak to you. And the king of Israel said, we're going to die. There's no more water. Our horses are going to die. And Jehoshaphat said, do you have a word from us? And the prophet of God released that word. He says, you will not see any rain. You will not see any wind. You will not see any storm. But tomorrow there shall be water. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Amen. He says, now go dig ditches. Tell your neighbor, dig ditches. Come on, tell them, dig ditches. And the Bible says, uh, in the morning, at the time of the morning,
morning sacrifice. What happens at the time of the morning sacrifice? A lamb is slaughtered and his blood is shed. Listen, there was no wind, there was no storm, there was no rain. But when the blood was shed, the Bible says the water came and run through the ditches. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and say where the blood flows the supernatural will follow I can't hear you come on say where the blood flows the supernatural will follow and the Bible says the water came in the ditches and the king of Moab saw from a distance and the water looked like blood and he said surely Judah and Israel have killed themselves and we will go and fetch the goods let me tell you this morning the blood will be the confusion of your enemies Shout amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. And they came, and Moab came to fetch the loot. And the Bible said, when he came, glory be to God. Now Judah and Israel rose up against him and began to pursue after him. Lift up your hands and sit with me. Said the blood of Jesus will not make me the hunted, but make me the hunter. Come on, lift up your hands to the blood. Will make me the hunted. From today, whatever has been hunting you, you will hunt after them. From today, whatever has been tracking your life, they will no longer be track to track your life. You will track after them. The blood will take you from the place of being a prey to becoming a predator. Come on, lift up your hands and say, I'm no longer a prey. Hallelujah. The chains have been broken. Glory be to God. And we are free. We are no longer prey because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. Now, listen to this. So now, Moab is on the run. Your enemy will be on the run from you. Witchcraft will be on the run from you. Whoever is sick in your life, they'll be on the run from you. And the Bible says, when he knew he was about to be penetrated, he also knew the principle of blood sacrifice. You know what he did? He slew his son over the wall and shed his blood. And the Bible says, when Judah saw that, they turned away. Are oh, you listening to me, somebody? 2,000 years ago, God shed the blood of his son Jesus on Mount Calvary. Whatever is supposed to be penetrating your life, when they see the blood, amen, they will have to turn away from you. Amen. Come on, lift up your hands and say, I receive that. I receive that. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Remember David? Remember David? Right? He sinned against God by numbering Israel. Why was it a sin? Because Israel's protection was never in the size of the army, but in the power of God. Right? Now because he has sinned, judgment has been released against Israel. Are you listening? And the men are dying. And David says, what do I do? What do I do? He calls the prophet. And the prophet gives him a few choice. He said, I'd rather fall in the hand of God. And David looks up. He, saw, he sees in the spirit, there's an angel with a sword drawn out. Are you listening? That angel is so big. He's got one foot on the earth and one foot in heaven. And he's got a sword drawn out. Killing the man of Israel. So the prophet says to David, go to Jerusalem. Go to the threshing floor of Arona. Buy the threshing floor and buy cattle. So when he gets there, he says to Arona, I need your threshing floor and I need some cattle. And Arona says, everything is at your disposal. David said, no, 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 no. I cannot give to God something that does not cost me anything. Amen. So he buys the threshing floor. That same threshing floor will be where Jesus will be crucified later. Are you hearing me somebody? And so he, he sheds the blood of the lamb. The sacrificial blood. And the Bible says the moment the blood is shed. God himself. Look at an angel with his sword drawn out. 
and said to the angel, put your sword back. Mm. Any sword drawn against your life, any sword that has been thrown out against your future, any sword that has been taken out to slay you and to kill off your generation because you invoke the blood, God himself will say, devil, put your sword back. Yeah. Lift up your hands and say this with me. Say, devil, devil. put your sword back. Say it again. Put your sword back. Hallelujah. Whatever is supposed to take away your life and cut you down, they will never be able to cut you down. Yeah. Lift up your hand and say, I receive that. Amen. Witchcraft has no power over you. Generational curse has no power over you. Say amen, somebody. Yeah. Ye years ago, I went to Mauritius and, and, and I was a young fellow, young man. I went there and I did not know the country. So I wanted to, this is where I was born, but I wasn't raised there. So I went there to preach and I was, after finishing preaching, they said, do you want us to drive you away? I said, no, no, no. I want to walk and see what the country looked like. And I was walking with a friend of mine. Now watch this, follow me. I was walking with a friend of mine and I was walking and he was here on my side and I was here on this side and we were walking on the pavement, on the sidewalk. And I saw at the crossroad of the road. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of the year again, and Christmas is just around the corner. It is the season of giving and receiving. This week, we have a very special Christmas offer for you to give to someone special. A special gift that will be a blessing to them again and again. This Christmas, our special offer is four powerful books. The Holy Spirit, The Supernatural in You, The Power of Praying in Tongues, 101 Explosive Benefits of Fasting, and Provoking Exploits Through the Force of Imposing Aggressive Faith. These four books normally would sell for $65, but for this festive season, you can have this life-changing package for an offering of $50 plus shipping and handling. Take advantage of this Christmas offer right now and bless someone special with this gift. Four powerful books for an offering of $50 plus shipping and handling. Call the number on your screen, 502-523-4407, 502-523-4407, or go online at glenorecion.org. Go ye into all the world is a mandate given to every believer. However, not everybody's called to go on the mission field. But you can still play your part in the Great Commission and partner with Glenn Arecchion Ministries. Today, consider to be one of Dr. Glenn's faithful, financial, and prayerful partners.